The new Chevy Bolt, it's actually the EUV that's been modified. So General Motors have come along, they've taken the EUV, they've changed some things, changed the battery, made some nice upgrades to it, and they've priced it extremely well, 30,000 US dollars, including destination charges. But there'll be a $29,000 version coming after that. Now, this means it's probably the best value electric car you'll be able to buy in the United States. But is it actually better than buying a secondhand Tesla? Well, maybe. Here are the details behind the new Chevy Bolt and why I think it's actually a pretty good car. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. The Chevy Bolt. It's, there's only one model now, by the way. It's just an EUV. One big problem with this car, there's one massive problem that I think is a huge mistake, but everything else is really good. And I'll tell you what that big mistake is at the end of the video, just because I don't want to wreck the video for you. I know a lot of people are excited about this car, but I think you need to know this one problem with the car. In fact, I think there's probably two problems actually, but first of all, it has some pretty big improvements over the existing or the, the old Chevy Bolt much better charging. In fact, charging speed is triple, triple the old version. It has a better battery pack. It's got a little bit more range. It's got a lot more power. So all in all, it's a much better car than its predecessor. So with a maximum charging speed of just 50 kilowatts, the old Chevy Bolt took more than one hour to fully charge when plugged into a DC fast charger. The new Bolt now shares it's tech with larger General Motors siblings, such as the Chevy Equinox EV, meaning its charging speed has increased around 2.5 times to 150 kilowatt, which is not super fast, to be honest, but it's a lot better than the old version. And that means it matches the new Nissan Leaf and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's actually able to charge faster than a Hyundai Kona Electric and a Kia Nero EV, and even than a Kia EV3, which only charges at around 120 to 140 kilowatt. The previous Bolt EUV was, well, really popular because it was affordable. It had 247 miles of range, but it had some issues. It didn't have the ability to precondition the battery, meaning charging in winter took a very, very long time. It just wasn't a road trip car. That was the big downside. At least, at least it wasn't a road trip car in winter, but this version is significantly better. In fact, General Motors said this, it used to be known as a commuter car. Now it's a bona fide road trip vehicle. Is it a bona fide road trip vehicle? Not really, but you can definitely use it for road trips. Range has increased not by much, but it's increased probably more meaningfully than people realize because the battery chemistry has changed. It's gone from 247 miles of EPA range to 255 miles of EPA range. That's a, that's a bigger improvement than it sounds because the new batteries are lithium ion phosphate, meaning you can charge them to 100% whenever you want. It's not a it's not a downgrade, it's not an issue. And remember, General Motors underquotes its range genuinely with its cars. Its EPA range is probably less than what it's going to get in the real world. In real world testing, GM's EVs almost always get more range than what General Motors says they will. So, I mean, we don't know for sure that's going to be the case with this car, but it's pretty likely to be. So that battery is quite different. It's a 65 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery pack. And yeah, I think it's actually made by a Chinese company, the battery cells, at least anyway. So considering there is obviously tariffs on Chinese products, these batteries are obviously much, much cheaper to produce than the batteries that General Motors makes with its joint venture partners in the United States. One other advantage it has, it has a Tesla NAX port built into the car. It actually doesn't have any um, charging ports for non-Tesla chargers. You've got to get an adapter if you want to char connect to a non-Tesla charger. But I'm guessing General Motors thinks, well, most people probably aren't even going to do that anyway. So anyway, Tesla NAX port is built into the side of the vehicle. And charging time, 26 minutes, 10 to 80%. So that's a pretty respectable speed. 
I think that's um, enough for pretty much, you know, most people. Now, getting back to the construction of this car, General Motors say it's 50% different to the original Chevy Bolt EUV. So 50% of the car has been changed. Apparently, this is, well, this is what they had to say. In the interest of bringing the Bolt back quickly, we kept the structural steel components and the sheet metal the same. So you can see in the images, it is a little different. It's got different lights, but it, it's actually the same as the Chevy Bolt EUV in terms of overall dimensions. But Chevy say it's still a new car underneath, and it does have a lot more power. It's got 210 horsepower, which is not a huge amount of power. It's not going to be a light car, but it's a fair bit more than the other version. It's a fair bit more than the superseded version which had 150 kilowatt or 200 or 200 horsepower. So actually not a fair bit, it's a 10, 10 horsepower difference. But anyway, it's more than enough. So what else has been changed? Well, General Motors says the new components include the X76 electric drive unit. So it's got a new electric drive unit, obviously the new battery, new brake modules, as well as the Global B electrical architecture, which GM also calls its vehicle intelligence platform for functions such as over the air upgrades. Some of the visual similarity and carryover chassis components helped General Motors keep the cost low. And it's it might be the, the lowest cost EV in the US when it goes on sale, which unfortunately is not going to happen until the first quarter of 2027. And when I say the lowest cost, technically the Nissan Leaf is the lowest cost EV in the US right now. But I think that um, there's a good chance Nissan won't be around in 2027, or at least not the way we know them today anyway. Inside, it gets a large, well, not large, actually, just a, an ordinary 11-inch gauge cluster, and it has an 11.3-inch infotainment display with Google built in. It does not get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, as on other General Motors EVs. Now, it does have native Google Maps, which show charging stations along your route, and it will work with available hands-free Super Cruise. So it's a little bit like Tesla's autopilot. When the new Bolt goes on sale in January 2027, its main competitor would be the Nissan Leaf, in theory, if that vehicle is still priced what it is today. But um, General Motors said this, right? This is the big negative. Well, first of all, the negative is not going to be out until January of 2027. That sucks. You've got to wait more than a year for this car if you want one. But... This is what they said. The Bolt will be a limited run model only. They said they don't have any production constraints, but it's a limited run model only. In other words, they're not going to keep making this like a series model. This is it. I don't know what that means by limited run model only, but um, either way, to me, that's a negative. I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that's good. I think we want, we need affordable electric cars. You know, more affordable electric cars. Anyway, now compared to cars in China, this car is an absolute ripoff. Um, but this is not China, this is the United States and things are much more expensive to make in the United States and compared to other cars in the United States, it's actually incredibly good value. The interior, in my opinion, looks good. And if you don't like the Tesla brand, then it's worth getting one of these instead of a used Tesla. But if you don't mind what car brand you drive, then I think a used Tesla would be a better choice. And you wouldn't have to wait more than a year to get it. And there's a little bit of confusion, guys, as well, with this whole limited series run, limited run production. That sounds, I don't know, a bit odd. But either way, guys, I'm a fan of this car. I think General Motors have done a good job with it. I just, you know, I just think, um, bring it out faster. Why are you letting us know all this information when we've still got like 15 months to go before you actually make the cars? Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now, I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.